That's why in 2016, I decided to initiate this international non-profit action to raise awareness on food waste, to show ways how to improve practices, attitudes, and have a more conscious and sustainable kitchen. And my inspiration was, of course, my Jewish culinary heritage. I have this baggage full from my grandmothers. One is Sephardic, the other is Georgian. So I said, I, I can put all this because it was a generation of all these women who were using everything, every part of the ingredient to cook. So that's how uh, the project came along. Welcome to 18 Jewish Foods, culture and history in kosher bite-sized portions. This podcast tells the stories of iconic Jewish dishes, shedding light on the people who eat them. Here's your host, Joel Haber. One of the famous roles of the Jewish people is to be a light to the other nations of the world. In other words, to pass values that God, we believe, gave to us onto the rest of the world. Isaiah repeatedly uses this term, a light to the nations, as a way of describing us. One example of this would be monotheism. We, of course, were the first monotheists in the world. Now there are many monotheistic religions. But also on a smaller level, we just think about our simple values, things that we can pass along. This episode's food highlights one of those values that we try to impart to the world. The food is called kashkarikas, and the value is not wasting things. We believe that everything on earth is a gift of God. And so, therefore, it would be sinful to just throw those gifts out. In Aramaic, the term for this value is bal tashchit, do not waste. And kashkarikas are the perfect example of this concept in action. In the kitchen, when we're cooking, we often end up with scraps during the preparation of other dishes. And those would often end up being thrown out. In Turkey, Sephardic Jews created a dish that transformed a common scrap into a delectable appetizer, a salad of sorts. The word cascara is how you say peel in Spanish. And so cascaricas is a diminutive, meaning little peels. And specifically here, we're referring to the peels of zucchinis, cooked lightly in lemon juice, olive oil, water, with some salt, pepper, and sugar, giving it a sort of a sweet and sour flavor. And then just before serving, it is mixed with lots and lots of dill fresh dill. Basically, when these Sephardic Jewish cooks would use the flesh of the zucchini for other dishes, the peels that they took off, that they removed, might have been tossed in the garbage. But, bal tashchit. So, rather than throwing them out, let's create a second dish and turn our kitchen trash into culinary treasure. Now, obviously, I'm not implying that we were the only ones who believed that food should not be wasted. But, Perhaps we could make the argument that Jews took it to a greater extreme. We stress the importance of this concept even more than many others may have. And for a little bit more on this idea, I want to turn to my interviewee this week, Sibel Pinto. She is a chef, a cooking instructor, and a lecturer who has made this idea into her mission. Sibel was born in Istanbul of Sephardic descent. Now she lives in Paris. And a few years ago, she launched the international organization Action Kashkarikas. You are a woman on a mission, literally a, a mission to help people reduce food waste. And you started an organization, Action Kashkarikas. Tell me a little bit specifically about what the organization itself does. I've been in the food business for about 25 years now. I mean, it's a long time. And during this period, I was deeply concerned to see how much food was wasted in the kitchens, even in professional kitchens and at home kitchens also. And most waste was generally, I mean, actually it was not waste. It was perfectly safe, hygienic and nutritious to eat. It was edible waste, let's say. 
if you look at the food and agriculture organization numbers one third of all food produced for human consumption is wasted every year and it comes up to about 1.3 billion tons which is a huge 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 number i mean it's it's really a scandal and when you say food waste it's also not only food because it's energy it is water it's all the human input also put in that food. So I said, uh, I have to do something. So what can I do? As I'm a cook, we cooks have the opportunity to have a significant impact on reducing food waste because we can be engaged, we can be active, creative, and we can teach other people also. That's why in 2016, I decided to initiate this international nonprofit action to raise awareness on food waste, to show ways how to improve practices, attitudes, and have a more conscious and sustainable kitchen. And my inspiration was, of course, my Jewish culinary heritage. I have this baggage full from my grandmothers. One is Sephardic, the other is Georgian. So I said, I I can put all this because it was a generation of all these women who were using everything, every part of the ingredient to cook. So that's how uh, the project came along. So how is the project spreading awareness. In fact, when I started in 2016, I collaborated with many different chefs, restaurants, organizations, associations, some Jewish, some not. And it was like, a, let's say, a mini world tour because I went to different countries where I collaborated with these people. And there were classes in universities. Uh, we had conferences. We had hands-on cooking classes. We did fundraising dinners. Uh, it was all part of the project, in fact. And at the end, it came up to the book, which compiled all this four or five years of the uh, visiting in different countries. But after the COVID episode, of course, I couldn't go on visiting around. So I switched into doing Zoom classes, um, online classes, etc. And I'm still continuing with that. Wonderful. The name of your organization, Action Kashkarikas, obviously is drawn from the dish Kashkarikas. Did the food inspire the action or is it just that when you came up with the idea for the organization, you're like, this is the perfect name for it? I think, of course, I started from what I can do about food waste. But when I think about food waste, I always think of the peels, the scraps, the things that we normally put into trash and don't use, but our ancestors did use them. And the peels that my grandmother used were the zucchini peels. And she was doing a kind of an olive oil meze kind of dish uh, with the peels of the uh, zucchini because she was using the real zucchini, the flesh of the zucchini to do a gratin, something different. But she was not throwing away the peels and she was using those peels to do a second dish from the same, same ingredient. So that was, I said, I mean, that's really very good because it matches completely with, with what I'm trying to do. So that's how Kashkarikas became the name of the action. Are you aware of or familiar with other Sephardic Jewish dishes that act in a similar way that also take what would be a waste product and repurpose it into a new dish? Of course, there are lots of, for example, leftovers that are turned into another dish, like baked dishes where we use vegetables mixed with eggs and cheese, like a gratin, the French gratin. And we call them almodrote, enchusa. There are different names according to the vegetables because we can do them with zucchini, with some mashed eggplants, leeks, or artichokes. Another uh, category is the mashed veg vegetables, which turn into meatballs. And that's the thing where we stretch the meat because meat is something more expensive. So we use a little bit meat with lots of vegetables to stretch the meat and to do these uh, meatballs. These are the albondigas, yes? Albondigas, yes. Of course, we have fish patties where we use the leftover fish. We have ravicos, which are braised uh, spinach stems. The stamps are normally thrown into trash, but we can use those stamps to do a really nice uh, dish. Do you do that? Do you do that with chard as well? With chard as well, of course. Because that's even even a thicker stem. That's why I'm asking. Of course, and it's really delicious. And we have also desserts. For example, watermelon, the white part of the rind. The rind, yeah. Yes, that's turned into a dulce de carpus, which is also a watermelon jam. And there's also a very nice drink, uh, which is called pepitada or subia. And that's done from the melon seeds. 
and that's used to break the Yom Kippur fast. So I was going to ask as well, since we've mainly been speaking about Svartic cuisine, are there examples of this value or this technique that you found within the Georgian cuisine as well, the Georgian Jewish cuisine? Yes, of course, there are many recipes in my book from the Georgian cuisine. Could you, is there one recipe that you could uh, that you can think of, one dish that you can think of that repurposes food within the Georgian cuisine? Yeah, for example, there is shifte. Shifte is a, is a kind of meatball again, and they are using the chickpeas from the day before, for example. So the last question, uh, you mentioned your book, and I know that it's been out of print. That's right. <laughs> when will it be back? I mean, I would love to do that, but uh, I cannot give an exact date, but uh, let's see. Let's see. It's a book of um, about 300 pages. It's a big book, and there are 222 recipes in there wow. and they are divided into 60 main ingredients so when you're at home and you have an ingredient in your uh, fridge and you want to make good use of it so you can check it with the ingredient name it would be easier for the user and it's also um, it's a tribute to previous generations that they taught me all this and it's also an invitation to new generations to respect the environment and to give a second life to ingredients and to keep a sustainable and a conscious kitchen because I think we have to inspire the new generation. Well, I can tell you that I'm waiting eagerly for the book when it comes back and uh, thank you. I, I look forward to reading it when I can. The ravicos that Sibel mentioned using spinach stems is also very similar to an Italian Jewish dish called testina di spinaci, spinach heads. Basically, they would remove the stems of the spinach as well and prepare them in a very similar way to those Turkish kashkarikas. An Ashkenazi parallel, perhaps, to the idea of stretching the protein that was mentioned in relation to albondigas, those Sephardic meatballs, is gefilte fish. Gefilte fish, you grind up the fish, and of course you mix it with flavoring agents like onion, for example, but typically also you find flour or another starch mixed in with it as well. And while some see that more having a culinary purpose as a binder, others have understood this to be a way of stretching a limited amount of fish to feed more mouths. If before that fish might have served four people, now perhaps it could feed eight. Another element of not wasting is repurposing leftovers. Leftovers might get re-eaten just as reheated leftovers, but sometimes, unfortunately, if you don't get around to eating it, you might end up having to throw it out. And by repurposing the leftovers into a new dish, it makes it more interesting and more likely to get eaten. In the last episode, I spoke of shamburak, that dish invented in Jerusalem by a Syrian Kurdish Jew to repurpose those leftovers from Shabbat into a delicious meat, potato, and bread pastry. But interestingly, that's also the origin of knishes. The leftovers would be wrapped up into a dough and then baked, and you could take it with you and eat it on the road. I actually once heard knishes thus described as edible Tupperware, which I always love that image. So many Jewish foods across Jewish cuisine express this specific value of Baal Tashchit, do not waste. My next episode will be coming out just ahead of July 4th, so we will be heading to America. We're going to be discussing pastrami, and my guest will be Ted Merwin. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. Got any questions or comments? Please feel free to email me at jewishfoodbook at gmail.com. Please listen, like, and follow wherever you get your podcasts, and I would truly appreciate it if you'd share this with other Jewish food lovers. The theme music you hear is Adir Who Revisited by Rebbe Soul. Check him out wherever you stream music. And as always, until next time, I wish you Bitteavon. Bitteavon.